Hmm. So I just turned in the the node manipulator quest, and I got this book, Growth Spurt. It appears to be just instruction on how uh, on something with growing nodes might appreciate being fed with ethereal essence. Well, had I gotten a growing node, that would have been nice to know. While waiting on the node to charge up, I decided to complete the uh, Silverwood Scepter quest. Now, obviously the one I actually want to use would have void caps. But, you see here that this scepter, oh, it's actually very pretty. This thing holds 50 more V than you would expect. And furthermore, if I go and fill it up, oh, we have a chunk loading error. Hopefully I can pass over it and find a node. Screw it, I'll just use the one right here. Yes, let's fill that up with just a little bit of V so we can take a look at mm -hmm. Yeah, see? 60% average V cost, even lower than the Elementium Wand. Scepters are super efficient. And they hold even more. The downside is... I'm trying to put my cap on it, my Wand of Equal Trade, it cannot do that. Scepters can only be used for crafting. Huh, and it wants me to make a staff as well. I'll just get right on that. Okay, here we go, a staff core, a Silverwood staff core to be specific. Staves, and, and yes, this is just a staff core. It still needs to be capped. And it takes two caps just like a standard wand. Staves are just wands that only accept focuses. They cannot be used for crafting. Oh, and I get to pick either a scepter, a staff, or a staff. I would I would be expecting a wand. Oh well, um, um, it's sojourners. Sojourners, I think, will um try and evenly distribute the V it receives. Let's just see what the scepter is. Yeah, see, it's slightly less than the Silverwood, and it's not quite as good, too. It's capped with something crappy. But I think the the transmutative ones will... Like, say, if it was, if it was full of all elements except for Ignis, it would consume a little bit of all the other elements to refill Ignis. Until it was even. Up to a certain point. Anyway. Yeah. Next up, it would want me to make this Crucible of Souls. Well, that's fairly simple. It's just a smallish infusion. I'll get right on that. Alright. Crucible of Souls. Very ominous looking. Mm hmm. Yep, this looks like it just damages nearby monsters and turns them into the Essentia that they're made out of, and it looks like it produces flux as a side effect. First of all, monsters aren't a terribly good source of Ascension in the first place. Second of all, there's better ways to get it off of them. Third of all, I don't like Flux. So that is just going into storage. And let's see. It wants me to make a wand focus, but I can see immediately after it's going to make me uh, make the thing that's going to soup it up. And that requires Essentia lasers. And for that, we're going to need our node. Yeah, let's at least make that wand focus of shock. So, that's a fairly simple craft. It's not even an infusion. It's just <laughs> some air shards, some nether quartz, and a potato. Oh, potato is strong. Luckily, I actually have a few. Yes, there we are. The one focus of shock is a directly offensive focus. If I put it on my wand here, turns it into a cattle prod. Zap! Zap, 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 zap. Yes. It's not very good as it is, 
But the subject of the next quest on... Oh, that actually gave me a focus pouch. I didn't need to make one. Yes. This focal manipulator is something that you use the essential lasers. I need to figure out which one of these is my actual pouch. This, that one's empty. Yep. That is the empty one. Yes, this focal manipulator uses experience and V lasers to increase how powerful your wand foci are. So we are just going to need our super node. Oh, how did that get disconnected? I don't I don't need to run back, I just need. Yes, even with the obsidian casing, sometimes mistakes happen. And oh dear. Hmm. Well, actually, while I'm repairing this, let's let's try and get a look at how at how this is going. So let's knock that off. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's, it's a very uneven process, as you can see. It's mostly stocking up on Aqua and Terra and Ordo. But it is going. That node is getting pretty powerful. I'm looking for at least a hundred of each. You know what? I've been being stupid. These HDPE pellets only used to have as being turned into sheets. I mean, they can make this HDPE rod, but that's just used to make this plastic pla stick and apparently that is a joke item it does absolutely nothing so yeah just made a real quick enriching factory here and uh yep and i i of course put a new drawer on our wall Ooh, the wormwood bread up. That's just one quest left in here. <laughs> wormwood is useful for a couple of potion brewing uses in witchery. Um, it's used as a catalyst for liquid potions. Potions that, instead of just splashing out as an effect, will become uh, a flowing liquid. Like our brews of flowing spirit. Wrath enchantment. It's like another layer of sharpness. Whom. Ooh. It's so pokey pokey. Okay, let's... Oh, yes. You see that not only is it getting stronger, it's it's actually getting physically bigger. <laughs> and I think it actually starts to draw you in from a wider range, too. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's see if I can get a gander at it. Hmm. You know what? I think I might change it from sending in bits of wool to maybe sending in some gunpowder, because that contains Ignis and Perdicio directly. That should even it out. I built myself another wrath cage, this one just for kind of general purpose use. I have here an essential valve, which, when it's Closed will block all suction, and when open, when will allow it, just to reduce confusion on this alembic here. Anyway, gotta let it fill up with bestia. I just loaded it up with string, because that's bestia and panis. And I am going to be spawning some wolves, because they drop something interesting that I'd want to try. That's probably good enough to spawn a few.
Yes, I get the, I get these wolf pelts. And actually I get vastly more than I was expecting. <laughs> oh. Yes, if I want to tame an army of dogs, I can. It's still spinning fast. I think it might still be spawning. There we go. Anyway, yes, Wrath Cages can be reprogrammed just by deconstructing them. Drops the crystal. You put it down again, you can load in another crystal. Just gonna have a nice chest here to hold whatever crystals I want. But yeah, you've probably noticed sometimes when I'm like changing my title and stuff that I actually have quite a lot of extra slots. Well, one of those is a cape slot. Yeah, or they're a cloak slot. And it looks like it'd be fine if I put that on. Oh, it kind of, um, oh, okay, I see, I see. It's trying to do a hood thing. Uh, well, it kind of sticks up through the armor bits. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Well, I can I can make one that at least does something. And we'll see if that helps. Yes, yeah, very, very simple. The woven cloak. Ooh. Oh, that actually kind of works. I look so snugly. Makes me kind of look fat from behind. From the front, it looks pretty good, though. Anyway, yeah. That's from Witching Gadgets. Oops. And anytime I take damage, I will gain a damage and speed buff. So I figure since my armor doesn't make me completely invincible, I might as well take advantage of that. Next up, I can make these cute little van braces. But thanks to witching gadgets, I can also... And it's called Berserker. Yes, Berserker's Bracers. Well, it's just... Do, 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 there. Yes. Do those show up anywhere? Fan Braces. That would be kind of on the wrist, right? Maybe beneath my armor. Oh, yeah, I've kind of got fur ruffs on. I guess maybe it sticks up a little bit. Anyway, those will further increase my damage by another two points. Doesn't show up on my sword, but hey. Look at that. The system worked. Okay, so now I just need to prep this thing for transfer. Now, that is going to be a little bit of a, of a difficult proposition because, of course, if we try and transduce the node as it is, it'll just suck up the node transducer. So we have to, I'm, I'm just going to set it back to wool real quick, just so it gains a couple extra aspects while I'm doing all this. Yes, there we go. So, in order to transfer the node, we have to get rid of its hungry aspect. And there is only one way that I know of to do that. And that is to purposefully taint the node. We are going to have to create a taint biome. You see, when nodes are in a taint biome for long enough, they eventually become a tainted node, which act like 
those silverwood log nodes and sinister nodes in that they terraform the biome around them to taint. Tainted biome. The thing is, that tainted part of it, that takes the same slot as hungry, and it will overwrite it. So, I am going to have to make a couple of these ethereal blooms, create an exclusion zone around the, the hungry node, an area around it, where I can have a tainted biome. And I'm just going to have to make these bottles of liquid taint, for which I'm going to need tons of Vesium Essentia. And what those bottles of liquid taint will do is they will create little bits of fibrous... Well, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you once I get them crafted. I find that the easiest source of Vesium Essentia are these tainted saplings from Forbidden Magic. You get them just by, well, tainting an oak sapling with a little bit of seed Vesium. So you do need to go out and get a little bit of it first from, like tainted lands, and some veninum, and anyway, they are just a very fancy tree. Very interesting, pretty purple. They are very goopy and squidgy. And the logs, yeah, and they drop this fruit, yeah, but the really big source is the leaves. One each, and you get a ton of them, and they can still be sheared just like any other leaf. Whoosh. You remember how I told you that liquid milk is the easiest source of Sano? This is what I wanted it for. Okay, let's see if I have enough. These things have a pretty good range on them. So I'm just going to try and define this by how far the node is going to pull me in. So like, yeah, that's kind of the edge of it. So like right here. Yeah, see? These things grow in any soil and they look so cool when they grow. So I'm just kind of going to kind of guess that about that far apart is a good range. I don't know. This is more an art than a science. Oh yeah, and that silverwood log will actually work with this. Um, magical biome will override tainted biome. So I could also farm silverwoods, but I thought I would, you know, actually use my milk machine. Still, we can put that over there. It's a bit of a messy circle. Oh well. Yeah, the largest gap looks like it's like right here. So let's space that out a little bit better. Okay. That looks like it's a fairly... Well... I'm gonna futz with this forever. There, I think that's a fairly good size taint containment zone. Mm -hmm. Warperific. Bottle taint. Oh, doesn't that sound so appetizing. Now, I've had this stuff fail on me before, so here's hoping. <laughs> ah, it, there we go. There's a couple units of fibrous taint. And you see that they're kind of 
right at the edge of the exclusion zone. Well, no, they're green because they haven't terraformed the biome yet. They are biome dependent on their color. So as they terraform the land into tainted biome, they will turn purple. And that's one way to tell visually. And there we go. And now I just need to let that grow. And eventually, this node will become tainted. And it will no longer suck stuff in. Yes, the taint biome has spread to the tile containing the node. That is what is necessary. So, now that the node is contained within a tainted biome, eventually it will convert into a tainted node. Now, yes, and note that uh, the taint is watching us. Those eyes actually glow in the dark, too. If you have a huge tainted biome, it looks like the land is covered in eyes at night. It's really cool. Ooh, void aspect silverwood scepter. This thing should be pretty frickin' badass. Let's give it just a little bit of charge just so I can see what kind of percentage I'm getting. And yes, I am wearing my fancy clothes. Down to 51%. Well, it's not quite that 50% that I promised all y'all, but it's darn close. Ah, look at that. Hands off the keyboard, not getting sucked in. Okay, so first of all, need to turn the drip feed of wool off. Okay, and let me just quickly wand of equal trade away some of this, uh, some of this obsidian. Let's not use wool. Oops. Let's use cobblestone. That'll be easier. Oops. That is not a wand of equal trade. Okay. Oh, look at that big glowy thing. Ooh. Now this is still a fading node. So I don't want to just leave this idle for a couple hours, because fading nodes actually lose aspects over time. And I think the bigger they are, the faster they leak. No, wait, that's unstable, I'm thinking of. Fading just loses it relatively slowly, constantly. So, first thing I'm going to want to do is, over here, going to want to set up a silver wood log next to where I'm going to want to put it, just so that I don't get infestation while I am transducing it. Once it's transduced, it won't be a problem. So I think I will just be putting my node like right around there somewhere. Actually, no, I want Yeah, get a couple teleposers. And uh, I just need one focus. Wooden button will do just fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have my node right here. Just need the... there. And I'm going to put a silver wood log right there. And I'm still probably going to get a little bit of taint popping up, so I'm going to have to move these ethereal blooms around. Okay, and I just put the other teleposer underneath it. Give it the focus. And, zoop. Yeah, teleposers don't just teleport players. They teleport anything. 
Okay. And I do actually need to hurry and, and do this, so... There's the transducer. There's a stabilizer. And just a source of redstone. Actually, let's let's make the redstone slightly pretty. Redstone skull, very appropriate. Okay. And this should be a pretty badass energized node. Not the biggest I've ever built, but it's up there. Note that as it drains out, the glow kind of lessens. Yeah, I'm not sure how big V nodes can get or aura nodes. Like, maybe we could have a massive glowing beacon <laughs> flooding the base. That'd be hilarious. Uh-oh. No, I want to see this happen. It's okay. The, the magical forest biome will overwrite that as soon as it's done transducing. Ooh. Yeah, the amount of V on each aspect is based on the square root of the total amount of V. So you get less than you think, but still. That is actually a pretty solid drip feed of V coming in and recharging my wand. So yeah, now I guess this Man of Steel one is just a strictly backup wand. Because this scepter is the real deal right here. So, to make this focal manipulator, I just need a couple of simple ingredients. Might as well do that quest before I finish off for the day. These primal charms are kind of a pain to keep on making. I wish I had Thombic Energistic so I could auto-craft them. And there we are, Focal Manipulator. This lovely little device will accept power from our V laser. It should be in within range. I don't need to make a relay or anything. And it will allow me to take a wand focus. And I can put it in there. And then I can choose which effect I want. And you see I have these slots here. And some effects will only upgrade, will only unlock as I upgrade it. So I'm just going to take enlarge here for my wand of equal trade. And that will just make it affect a larger area. And you see it's going to take a little bit of V and some experience. And even with our wand and this thing charging at the same time, this is pretty quick because I made a pretty excessive node. And with these experience drops, I can keep my levels up. Going to go with enlarge again. Yeah, the focal manipulator is what you need to make some wands useful at all. Like the wand of equal trade, by default, it's okay for a couple of edge cases, but you need a certain upgrade on it to make it... Oh yeah, Petch's Curse. That's a pretty fun little... Oh, and it, it even comes with... Yeah, Petch's Curse is a basic offensive spell. It's pretty much just... A little bit of damage and poison. Zerm. Wom, wom. 
It arcs. Fun little spell. Looks cool. You normally have to get it by killing these cute creatures called Petches, but I haven't encountered any. They spawn in Magical Forest by n at night, but I have wandered around without my um, Vanity's Emptiness on, and I have not gotten lucky. Anyway, yes, this is what you want. Architect. What's this other one? Treasure? Uh. Yeah, Architect. This makes the Wand of Equal Trade really useful. While that's going, I'm just going to start to clean up the, uh, the mess I made. Yeah. With a bunch of ethereal blooms sitting in a... Sitting in like this, it should clean up pretty darn quick. And let's just put this right here just so that that corner one can't escape. Yeah, see? It's it's kind of losing its purple sheen already, and gradually the fibrous taint will begin to die off. That's still going, huh? Why are you shooting lasers to that? That doesn't need anything. Eh, the V lasers have always kind of been visually buggy. Anyway, yeah, notice that our fibrous taint problem has disappeared, and we have, n well, we have some tiles of tainted biome. That's just going to gradually be replaced by magical lands. But yeah, transduced nodes lose their uh, secondary effects, so it will no longer be fading, and it will, um, it will no longer spread taint. Ooh, there we go. And note that I just lost that fortune upgrade that was on there. That would make it behave like it had looting and fortune for, like, if I used it to mine up ore chunks. Yeah, sometimes you have to make choices. Anyway, the V per cast is getting higher and higher because the area is getting larger and larger, but that doesn't particularly matter with my mana wand. And now I have this really fancy one. Let me get some cobble. And let's go over here. Yeah. See, I can... I can actually see what it's doing. And I think that there's a way to control the size of it. Let's see, is it... Ah! After doing a little bit of research, I figured it out. Okay. So, what you do is... You have this assigned key, which I have assigned to G. Um, I, I forget what it's called at the moment. Anyway, if... Okay, so you see these arrows pointing out. If I just press G, you see? I can set the size up to my maximum. Like that. And if I shift G, I change to that. And I can change it along that dimension. And along that dimension. So I can precisely control the area that I will be doing with my wand. And that makes this really wonderful for decorating. And of course, different foci will have different things. Like for example, the potency upgrades on our little shock prod here increases the amount of damage. It'll also eventually get Chain Lightning that'll allow it to jump between enemies, and I think it can even have a Ball Lightning thing that creates a area of effect type thing. So, there's lots of things to play with for souping up your magic with this Focal Manipulator. It is very, very cool. So today, we have done quite a lot of magic. Oh yes, I think the only quest that we have left is this Gate of the Void Walkers, which 
will be another high level infusion and all that will do is that will regenerate the eldritch dimension for us and yeah see the the taint is already cleaned up i'm just going to leave that for another minute just to make sure so we are just about done with the thomcraft quests <sighs> so i guess now, really, we're running out of things that I could do. Oh, hey! This new chapter recovered. Or, this, this, this new chapter... Oh, God, I'm exhausted. But, yeah, I mean... Uh, I keep putting it off. I might as well just bite the bullet. Oh, no, not the beast! Yep. Next time on Regrowth. <laughs>